Hello everyone, it is history time. We're taking a look at the causes of the Renaissance and the Silk Road is the first item we're looking at here. If we look across the top here, there are five boxes. The ones that are in the color of cyan are a little bit of extra information, but still important. Uh, the first one, China had at times kept to itself in the past and avoided foreigners. This is known as isolationism. And if we go to the next slide here and take a look at my crude map of China, China uh, to the Europeans at the time was known as Cathay, and they just did not want others around, so they practiced isolationism. Let's go back to our first slide again, pulling down this next box, item number two in the reasons. The Mongols under Genghis Khan conquered China and Persia and reopened the Silk Road. So now that uh, that pathway was available, we go on to this next item. Marco Polo brought back many items and stories from China. He was not the only European who had been there and seen great things. So that is an important uh, thought, and we'll come back to that a little bit later. And take a look at the next box here, if I can grab the corner and open it up. When Marco Polo returned, his city-state was at war, and he was imprisoned for political reasons. So we can take a look at the next item there. Home sweet home? No, home sweet war. And Marco Polo was imprisoned. Uh, every time I think of um, the Leaning Tower of Pizza. Uh, okay, we'll go on from there. Leaning Tower of Pizza is what it is. Sorry for the bad humor. We'll move on and get to our next item in yellow. Marco's cellmate was Rusticello di Pisa, an Italian romance writer. What can you do when you are in prison? You can co-write Marco Polo's autobiography, The Travels of Marco Polo. So a very important thing there. Marco wrote down what had happened to him in China and the great things that he saw. Now, what were some of the short-term effects of the Silk Road opening? So we'll take a look at the short-term effects right here and pull over this first green box. In the green boxes, we have the effects. Left side is short-term, right side is long-term. Europeans learned of many things that had not yet been invented or used in Europe, such as paper money, eyeglasses, coal, and the postal service, or a postal service, just to name a few. And another short-term effect. There was great demand for copies of Polo's book. Uh, many people wanted to read and find about this new place or this place that was new to them that had actually been around for a long time. What were the long-term effects? Let's take a look at those. Coming over here to the first green box. Future explorers, including Christopher Columbus, were inspired by Marco Polo's writing and sought a quicker route to China. So that's a big one, folks. And let's go to the second box here. Thus, many lands unseen before by Europeans were discovered, or in their eyes were discovered. Of course, there had been people living there all the time, and uh, that creates some issues down the road here. We have uh, in our last box here just a little extra piece of information, and uh, it caused something else in China. China eventually built the Great Wall to keep the Mongols from invading from the north. So the fact that the Mongols did invade eventually led to the building of the Great Wall of China. So we have two items, uh, two main points here, along with the other items that we had talked about. The Silk Road, um, the first one. Marco Polo brought back many items and stories from China. He was not the only European who had been there. But why is it so important? He wrote down what he had done and had seen. And that is the reason so many people were aware of it. So there you have it, folks, the first reason, the Silk Road.